Many fighters start from the bottom and work their way to fame, but Charles de Bronx Oliveira has a story like no other. Raised in poverty in the neighborhood of Guarujá, Charles was told as a kid that he would never have a normal life. Now, he may well be the greatest lightweight fighter the world has ever seen. Here's the story of the man from the favela who's left the division blazing in his path. First, a long journey for the Brazilian. Starting his jiu-jitsu training at only 12, Oliveira entered the UFC at only 21 years old. And right from his debut, he proved that his submission game was in a league of its own. He instantly established himself as a problem for the promotion by extending his winning streak to 14 outstanding fights. After many wins and losses, the Brazilian bounced back with a four-bout winning streak, which set up a brutal battle against Max Holloway in the main event of a UFC fight night in August 2015. However, in what was a life-changing fight, he was knocked out in the first round due to an esophageal tear. Next, he's a quitter. Lying on the octagon floor while he couldn't feel his body at all, Charles wondered if he'd ever walk again. And people were quick to add on to that doubt. Time and time again, fighters had called him a quitter, that he didn't have the mindset of a warrior, and, well, that he wasn't cut out for the brutal sport. Watching him lying there paralyzed, one can't help but wonder whether the fighter had indeed reached his limits. As Oliveira's father once told him, it's easy to come into the sport, but hard to stay in it. After a few more bumps in the road, Oliveira knew the featherweight division wasn't for him, and instead moved to lightweight. He's been unstoppable ever since. Many critics and fans have equaled the entire shift in demeanor and skill to the birth of his daughter in 2017, since we saw a completely unrivaled side of the Brazilian. And it all came to a standstill when he captured the lightweight title against Michael Chandler in UFC 262. And that too with a TKO from someone who's always been considered a submission artist. After spending 11 years dreaming about this day, the boy from the favela had finally done it. Now for an impressive resume. And just like that, Charles has names like Tony Ferguson, Michael Chandler, Dustin Poirier, and now after UFC 274, Justin Gaethje under his roster. But let's talk about that last one a little more. In what was a win before it was even a proper fight, the highlight got choked out by Oliveira like many before him. But what impressed many, aside from Oliveira's stellar performance, was his resolve to be the best lightweight there's ever been. Because just the night before, Charles Oliveira had been stripped of his title for a missed weight cut. With just 0.5 pounds, Oliveira had lost the belt, and only Gaethje could now leave the octagon as champion. In what was a jaw-dropping performance, Gaethje actually didn't stand a chance. Since it's easy to call Dobronx a quitter before the bell rings, many fighters end up eating their own words. The Brazilian certainly didn't fight like a man who had no chance of winning the belt. And it's about time people stop underestimating what he brings to the ring. And it isn't just his great submission game that makes him different from the rest. It's his striking now, too. He not only pounded Chandler to a TKO, but he also wobbled one of the toughest chins in the UFC, Justin Gagey. So now we have to ask ourselves, do we have the new lightweight GOAT? Up next, the greatest lightweight. Many fans don't take kindly to Oliveira being called the greatest lightweight because they feel only Khabib Nurmagomedov deserves the honor. With or without the belt around his waist, Oliveira's current victory streak, 33-8-1-N-C, has gone a long way toward establishing him as the finest lightweight on the planet other than Khabib. Khabib Nurmagomedov, the latter who of course retired after his final fight in late 2020 which forced many to draw comparisons and matchups that will sadly never take place. The only issue now is how much more the 32-year-old has to achieve before passing Nurmagomedov as the greatest 155-pound champion in UFC history. So let's break it down, shall we? Oliveira now holds UFC records for most submission wins, 16, as well as overall finishes, 19. And while failing to equal Nurmagomedov's clean sheet in his pro career with eight losses and five times missing weight, this record isn't shabby by any means. He's clearly used to the lessons learned from his past failures to polish out his game while developing an almost otherworldly degree of resolve and self-confidence. And it shows. And as we've mentioned, now that his striking has caught up to the threat he poses on the ground, Oliveira could be considered the most dangerous finisher in UFC title history. It's a label best offended by the fact that only four of the fighter's 42 professional fights have ever acquired a decision from the judges. That's an absolutely crazy figure, and in theory, Oliveira would only need a couple more title defenses to dethrone Nurmagomedov as the greatest UFC lightweight champion, and now regaining his belt. In the chilling words of the fighter himself, the champion has a name and his name is Charles Oliveira. It's a testament to Dobronx's character and resolve that he doesn't let losing the belt phase him one bit. Instead, he has his eyes on the prize, getting back what he's earned. So, it's not surprising that UFC 
UFC lightweight Islam Makachev wants to fight for the vacant title against Oliveira in October and feels he can beat the Brazilian at his own game of submission grappling. Considered by many to be the next Khabib, it'll put the skills of the Brazilian to the ultimate test. Makachev is unlikely to be able to compete with Oliveira in a straight striking contest, therefore it will be interesting to see how these two skilled grapplers execute their strategies. We're unlikely to see former lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov take on Oliveira, but why not the next best thing? Next, Conor McGregor is on everyone's mind. It's become quite the trend of calling out the Irishman after a fight, and the former champ is no different. We know it's difficult to believe he'd pass up a chance to reclaim the championship, but Oliveira has claimed he's really considering a fight at a catchweight with former double champion Conor McGregor. The Notorious is 1-3 in his previous four fights and is currently in recovery and training after a bizarre injury against Poirier. Bronx has stated that if he faces McGregor, it will be at a catch weight rather than for a title. A pay-per-view fight with the former double champ will not only strengthen his legacy, but well, the money's great too. He wants the payday that a McGregor fight would bring. Of course, part of it is because he needs to provide for his family and wants to provide a better life for his child than he had growing up, where his father missed out on his meal so his children wouldn't starve for even a single day. One of the best parts about having money now, he says, is being able to order whatever he wants at a restaurant without worrying about how much it will cost. But his money also allows him to achieve a long-held dream of aiding the less poor. Dobronx is true to his nickname and doesn't shy away or forget where he comes from, and that's one of the reasons why he's so formidable. Finally, what the future could look like for Oliveira. Every time the Brazilian steps into the octagon, he looks better than before, and has now been called unstoppable by many. So it's no shock that both Chandler and Poirier have called him out on a rematch. Whether he takes them up on that is ultimately up to Dana White, but Oliveira himself doesn't care who you put in front of him. He'll put them to sleep before they even begin to realize what's happening. The fight with McGregor ultimately doesn't seem likely, since the earliest he's expected to come back is fall this year, and a matchup with the champ seems extremely foolish. So, the more realistic idea would be either Makachev himself or the winner of the Makachev vs. Benil Dariush, which is the fight Dana wants for now. Being deserving of the title doesn't ensure one will receive it, which means Makachev may find himself waiting as everyone from Chandler in a rematch to McGregor may cut the line in front of him based on UFC matchmaker selections. In that case, it would be fitting for Oliveira to face a fighter coached by Nurmagomedov for the chance to pass him on the list of greatest lightweight champions in UFC history. So we'll just have to wait and watch what the UFC decides, but one thing's certain. For many, Dobronx is still the champ. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think is next for the Brazilian, and will he earn back his belt? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.